In today's episode, kids think learning to save learning to code Minecraft skins? Murphy's Law is a lifestyle. The file is how old? Before we get started make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. Kids think learning to save learning to code Minecraft skins? So I work IT in a primary school and unfortunately, I'm good with people and kids so this means I help teachers teach IT in the classroom. Currently we've been coding Minecraft skins, as you can probably imagine for the kids this is the best thing since sliced bread. They are super excited. Already when I go into the classroom I have an advantage over the other teachers, I teach computers so already the kids, no matter who they are, are excited and pay extra attention when on the computer. As you could imagine, when I said we're gonna learn to code Minecraft skins from scratch, I blew their minds. So we make our skins and save our .png files, start coding a few .json files when it occurs to me that this is a great chance to show the kids the joys of Control plus S which we all know is the most amazing, wonderful thing to learn. I've got my computer connected to the TV in the room and show the kids what we are coding, as I always do when we are done with something, I ask the kids and what do I do next? What's the most important thing we do at the end of anything? A few answers later and they remember the answer is saving. Okay, guys, I'ma show you a trick. So, see this asterisk next to where our file lives at the top of the screen? Yeah, yep, nah, miss, you mean the star? Well that asterisk means I've made changes but I haven't saved, so watch this. In a second I'm gonna press Ctrl plus S to save, and you will all notice the asterisk disappears. I then press Ctrl plus S. Then the asterisk disappears. And then, legitimately, the class erupted into applause. I have no idea why they decided the asterisk disappearing required a bigger applause than importing a Minecraft skin. But here we are. So at this point, we've made our skin, they've done some coding, we even did a Minecraft scavenger hunt the week before but never, not once has anything I've taught the kids resulted in a full-on, proper, not prompted, round of applause. We've done green screens, 3D printing, and every other cool thing you could imagine doing with kids. But no, not one of those cool things ever got me a round of applause from those kids, no, the first thing in 8 years of doing this to get me a legit round of applause, was showing the kids an asterisk disappearing when I press Ctrl plus S. So from now on, no more fun things, we're teaching all the kids Ctrl plus S. Murphy's Law is a Lifestyle For those of you familiar with my previous post of projector woes, you might have noticed a lack of closure. A problem was presented but no resolution was reached. That's because this ticket has been open for 3 to 4 months. For those of you not familiar, I'm an elementary school technician for a fairly large school district. The ticket I've referenced above is for a new classroom install that required a new projector mount and cables ran as the room had never been used as a proper classroom before. This should have taken maybe a week since the maintenance team have a lot to cover. As stated before, we're at multiple months this has been on hold. The point of this post is to give proper closure to the last story, as I believe it's finally about to be finished. Hopefully the title should explain itself. Anyways, after the screw up with the ceiling tile marking was wrapped up previously, I resolved the issue by getting our new document that was just written for this, followed it to the T ensuring it was to have zero issues for when the electrician came back to finish the install. To do this, I pulled the mount, pole, projector, and cable to help this get done. The walls and tile were marked with paper, and I notified the principal to contact maintenance. Everyone was happy. Except. Two weeks later, nothing. What gives? I get a new ticket in my queue from the secretary saying the principal asked her to put in a ticket for the projector install. I explained that she needed to put in a maintenance ticket to have the mount installed. All seems to be well, and I go back to waiting. A few days later I get a message from my supervisor stating that the electrician came by and the mount was not in the room and he needs it to set up the electrical install as he mounts the outlet to it. What? Turns out, there's a brace type of mount that the pole connects to where the other mount is hooked up to. No one mentioned this when I came in asking for everything I needed as I had never done one of these installs and needed guidance. I explained to my supervisor that I put everything he himself handed me into the room. He paused, realizing there may have been another communication error, and got me the mount that I needed and asked that I email the electrician, 
apologize for the confusion, and drop off the mount for his install. So, wanting to wipe my hands of this, I agree, and do exactly that. Everything should be good now, right? Well. Electrician puts that mount up, hooks up the outlet and that's it. Document said he may hook up the other things too. Him having to come out there four or five times when things weren't done fully. He said it wasn't his job, as he was within his right to and I do not blame him. So I'm at the point that I'm asking for favors. This ticket is my bane, it's cursed me by simply existing, and I want it gone. I talked to one of the high school techs who trained me when I first started, explained the situation, and he offers to help me set up the install. I buy him lunch to cover his time, and we come up with a solution to video output, as running the cable would be a pain given the layout of the school. Our district is slowly rolling out a solution to display projection that utilizes these wireless PO boxes that allow someone to enter a code displayed through the projector and connect their device directly to it. Really cool devices, especially in these old schools that have VGA and RCA hookups in the walls that haven't been touched in 18-ish years. I grab one and talk to the networking tech who agrees to do me a favor and run a drop to the ceiling if I put in a ticket for it. I do the song and dance, go to the campus with my coworker, and we get the pole connected to the mount. Then comes the time to get the projector connected to its mount and the screws don't fit. In fact, there's only one screw and its threading is too thick. Murphy please. Run back to admin, grab another mount, verify there are screws, go back, and try to install. Those screws slip right into the holes. Threading is too small. Someone has gone through and stolen the screws out of our mounts and never told anyone. I'm crestfallen at this point. It's 10 minutes until clock out, I've tried to get this resolved after a dozen setbacks, and my coworker has declared me the single unluckiest person here. All wind has left my wings, and I am spiraling towards the earth. But, then my supervisor messages me saying he has another in his office. Sealed. I'm beyond excited, drive off to admin and pick it up. I'm much too paranoid at this point and decide to open it, grab a projector from storage, and verify the screws fit. Perfect screw in, I'm happy. I'm not about to let this box out of my sight. This is my key to closure. All will be right in my kingdom. But it's also Friday COB, and I'm exhausted from running everywhere all day. I know that I can't finish my install without that drop for the projection box, so I decide to call it there. My patience is run thin, and I'm in need of something going right. Tuesday I will be finalizing this and closing this ticket, Murphy permitting. I will have my closure and will be able to finally stop having nightmares about projector setups. So the moral of this story, for any techs or really anyone else, rule one is trust but verify. This has an amendment that I am issuing. Trust but verify, but your verification must be detailed, and you cannot trust anyone, even the people who give you guidance. People, even your superiors, make mistakes and may not give you full information. And if you ever steal screws from a product that needs them, I curse you with constant, impossible to troubleshoot, network outages that vary between speed and connection issues. Update, y'all thought I was going to take until Wednesday to update, didn't ya? Well too bad, my paranoia set in. No actually the network tech called me and said he had the drop ran so I rushed to finish the install because I wanted to wipe my hands of it. Everything worked, I taught the teacher how to use the new device, told the principals, and everyone was super happy. This is, in fact, the happy ending. The file is how old? I do help desk and sometimes get some odd calls. Today's call falls into the top 10 for sure. Caller says she has a floppy disk, 3.5 inch, from a doctor that has files she wants to view. They've been transferred to a USB, but won't open. So I remote in and take a look. Tiny, 10 KB or smaller, files, and they have a .wk1 file type. I Google that and find, Lotus123. The files also have dates that end in 1989 on them, so I get to tell her that Windows won't read them, Excel won't read them, and IT doesn't have ancient equipment with Lotus123 to read them. If the MD does want to get the data he'd have to find an ancient, working, computer with Windows 3.1 and Lotus installed but we can't help.